Yeah. yeah. Megan Elliott is with the Red Cross. We'll get to you in just a moment. But first, I got to ask you, Ted. I mean, when you noticed that when Chris was trying to perform the Heimlich, mm -hmm. you noticed one thing, right? It was too right. high. Yeah, I noticed right away that, that the person who jumped up to try to help was, was pulling right up here. And uh, from the training that I had mm -hmm. had with the Red Cross, I knew it had to be mm -hmm. much lower. I said, you're too high, you're too high. And so that's when I was able to jump in and help. Yeah, and when we were talking with our colleagues, one of the things they noticed about you was that you remained completely calm. And I asked, I said, is that your personality? Or was it because of the training that gave you the confidence to know what to do? Right, it was a really terrifying situation for everybody at the table, particularly for Alex. Uh, very scary situation. But I told everybody afterward I wasn't scared at all because this is what we trained for. Mm -hmm. This is the skills that I learned and I was able to use those right away. There wasn't even a moment to think about being scared or panicking because I knew every second mattered at that mm -hmm. point. And to jump into action, we can be scared later, we can talk about how terrifying it was, but right now we have to do something about this situation that's right in front of us. You also w knew what to do if for some reason the Heimlich maneuver was not working. Right, and that's right? what we learned in the course is you try the Heimlich maneuver, there's another technique you can try by hitting them on mm -hmm. the back mm -hmm. uh, a proper way. And if that doesn't work, you know CPR skills from these classes. And meanwhile, the paramedics are on mm -hmm. their way. So there's a, a series of steps that you can take. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do this. If this doesn't work, I'm going to do this. We're going to keep this going until we have the real professionals here to help. And Megan, I have to admit that you know I was one of those coworkers who got the email about the CPR class. I didn't take time to go take it. I know, exactly. I will now. And, um, it, but this illustrates the importance of knowing mm -hmm. CPR because you just don't know when you're going to need it. Right. right. And one of the things I love about the uh, classes at the Red Cross is we have like a first aid component along with CPR and AED training, but not everyone, uh, not every company uh, takes that. Mm -hmm. uh, but the choking is covered in both the first aid or the non-first aid classes. And I really think that's smart because you're probably more likely to choke than to go into sudden cardiac arrest, right. as evidenced by you know what just happened on Saturday. So. And so, just taking that class um, and knowing the, mm -hmm. the couple of things, crucial things you mm -hmm. need to know in an emergency, will you be armed with that information, be able to know what to do, like Ted did? If you're unless you're one of the people that freezes in an emergency, which is why we like to have large numbers of people trained because you never know, uh, and it's not necessarily who you think it's going to be. Um, but so if you only have one or two people trained and you know, let's say one person's on vacation and one person, well, oh, what do I do? So we like, that's why we like to have large numbers of people in companies, in the community trained. That's right. our goal. And this dinner was a perfect example mm -hmm. of you have mm -hmm. eight people and mm -hmm. how many people actually knew mm -hmm. what to do. Some people thought they knew what to do, right. but didn't, wasn't doing the right thing. Right. Other people froze. And they had a baby. So yeah. another thing we always um, talk to people about is, you know, try as best as you can to take infant uh, CPR if you have a baby coming, whether it's a grandchild or a niece or a nephew. We really Really want everyone to be protected as as best they can you know take training save a life yeah and where can people find information about they can take class they can call our, our Seattle office um, our Red Cross office here in Seattle and uh, we're happy to set them up with either a community class or um, training at their company like what you guys do here yeah. and happy to help and you guys do this all the time oh around, we did right? 5 million people uh, in 2018 wow. in the United States wow. 17,000 people a day uh, get life-saving training from the Red Cross Incredible. How does it feel, Ted, to know that uh, your training paid off? Well, really good. I mean, because this is why we took the training. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're coworkers, but we're also friends outside of work. Mm -hmm. And I think if you saw a friend or family member in distress, you'd do mm -hmm. whatever it takes to help them out in that, mm -hmm. in that moment. Well, Ted, you are our hero for saving our friend's you. life. It just chokes me up to think. Thank you. No pun intended, but really <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> to just think about the fact that you helped save Alice's And life, we're going to be really. taking questions on our King 5 Facebook page yes. right after this from people mm -hmm. who want more information about, about what to yeah. do or we want to hear your stories if you've gone through a similar mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. and how that played out. Okay, so Megan and Tim will be on Facebook uh, at 730 on our King 5 Facebook page. Tune in for that.